गुड आफ्टरनून डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड लर्नर्स नमस्कार यू ऑल आर वॉचिंग ई विद्या चैनल नंबर नाइन एंड आई एम कुसुम प्रसाद सो डियर स्टूडेंट्स इज टाइम टू स्टडी साइंस एंड दिस सेशन इज फॉर क्लास नाइन स्टूडेंट्स एंड द सब्जेक्ट वी आर गोइंग टू टेक इज साइंस एंड द चैप्टर इज इज मैटर अराउंड प्योर सॉल्यूशंस and to teach this subject our today's expert is dr k k aroda sir namaskar and welcome sir bahut bahut swagat namaskar, namaskar sir thank you sir he former professor from zakir hussain college university of delhi so sir will teach you about this uh, chapter what is what all is in this chapter uh, before uh, that we will uh, let you know about all our various mediums where you can send your feedbacks your queries and all your suggestions so dear students and learners you can contact us on our phone number that is 8800440559 and you can also email us on our email id that is dth.class9@ciet.nic.in so these are the various medium where where you can approach us and you can connect connect to this channel e with the channel and on our and you can also connect through our emails तो अब हम बढ़ते हैं आज के सत्र की तरफ हमने आपको बता दिया हमारे विभिन्न माध्यम कौन कौन से हैं एक बार मैं फिर बता देती हूँ आज हम पढ़ने वाले हैं क्लास नाइन स्टूडेंट्स के लिए साइंस एंड द चैप्टर इज इज मैटर अराउंड अ प्योर सॉल्यूशंस एंड टू टीच दिस एक्सपर्ट इज डॉक्टर के के अरोड़ा सर सर लेट स्टार्ट दिस बिगेन दिस सेशन सर हेलो व्यूअर्स जी मैटर क्या है और क्या कुछ है इस चैप्टर में हमारे स्टूडेंट्स एंड लर्नर्स जानना चाहते हैं सर सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट दिस टॉपिक इज मैटर अराउंड अस प्योर बट बिफोर वी प्रोसीड विद द टॉपिक लेट अस डिस्कस व्हाट इज मैटर यू सी व्हाट्स ओवर वी सी एंड फील अराउंड देयर आर टू थिंग्स आइदर इट इज अ मैटर और एनर्जी एनर्जी वी कैन ओनली फील मे बी लाइट मे बी हीट बट मैटर we can use we eat we sit on whatsoever we use everything is matter uh, chemically we define that matter is anything that occupies space and has mass so all those things are matter it means we are matter what we are eating is matter i am sitting on a chair it is a matter so before going into the details of that how pure the matter is uh, let us clarify a misconception about the term pure okay you see whenever we go to market and we want to purchase something say i want to get a milk i say i want pure milk i want to get ghee i want pure ghee i want to get spices i always ask for pure spices but what does mean by the term pure here here the term pure means there is no adulteration into it a common man will have this notion with the term pure but scientifically it is not true because all these things let us take the example of milk milk is a mixture of water fats proteins and some carbohydrates also similarly spices they are obtained from plants and they are mixture of many substances so why we say that they are pure pure means there is no adulteration in it means in whatsoever form we are getting them from nature we should use it in that particular form but when we talk scientifically pure means it should be a single substance means whatsoever i am using it should be homogeneous should have same composition throughout its body like i take water water can be pure because it consists of only one type of particles milk is chemically not pure because it is a mixture of many substances so let us discuss more about the matter that how matter is classified matter can be classified into solid liquid and gas depending upon its physical state this you have already studied in your earlier classes then on basis of chemical composition matter can be classified as pure substance as i said just now or a mixture so we talked about milk 
we talked about ghee actually these are mixture of more than one chemical substances in general whatsoever we use they are mostly the mixture pure substances are only elements and compounds so matter can be classified on the basis of chemical composition as pure substance these are elements and compounds you are familiar with some elements like oxygen gas it's an element hydrogen gas it's an element you talk about iron you talk about gold so we can talk about these things that they can be pure but a single element then there are certain compounds they can also be pure like sodium chloride the table common table salt it can be pure carbon dioxide gas it's a compound we can have pure carbon dioxide now next we talk about mixtures mixture again can be of two types they can be homogeneous mixture or they can be heterogeneous mixture homogeneous means where all the components in the mixture that is all the compounds they may be elements or compound whatsoever it is present they are homogeneously mixed with each other means we cannot identify at one place there is one component at another place there is a different component in different ratio they have the uniform ratio and heterogeneous mixture means we can see certain particles at different stages or they may have different composition like if i talk about soil soil is not homogeneous it's a heterogeneous mixture but suppose i dissolve a spoon of sugar in a glass of water i get a mixture and this mixture is a homogeneous mixture because from wherever we taste i'll taste it sweet and to the same level means sugar molecules are equally distributed in that glass of water <laughs> now what are the characteristics of a homogeneous mixture because we are going to discuss in detail today the homogeneous mixtures first thing i said that it has a uniform composition means throughout the body of that mixture the composition of different elements or compounds it is same then the constituent particles are not visible means if i have dissolved sugar in water i am not able to see where the sugar molecules are moving and then these particles cannot be separated by simple filtration although there are some other methods by which we can separate the components but by simple filtration we cannot separate because they are present to such a small level and they are homogeneously mixed so a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances is known as solution and now we will take up in detail about the solution then there is one another common notion that solutions are generally liquid it is not so because in our routine life mostly solutions that we see they are liquid so it becomes a notion in our brain that solutions can only be liquid it is not so let us take about uh, the examples of some solution one common example that you see is salt or sugar dissolved in water then another example is tincture of iodine this is a solid iodine dissolved in alcohol which is liquid in the first example also we have dissolved salt or sugar they are solid and water is liquid so final phase of the solution is liquid oxygen dissolved in water we are not able to see oxygen dissolved in water but you must have studied that marine animals they survive inside the water because they take oxygen which is dissolved in water so it is a solution of gas in liquid but final phase again is liquid but we talk about air air is a mixture of gases if uh, we prevent the dust particles because they are not the part of the air they are as pollutant but if we take pure air again i am using the term here pure air not scientifically remember because it, that air itself is a mixture of many gases the two common gases you know are nitrogen and oxygen to some extent carbon dioxide is also present water vapor also present and so on 
But here the final phase of the solution is a gas. It is a mixture of gas in gas. Then aerated drinks. Aerated drinks that you have, uh, they have dissolved many coloring substances, sugar, some substances for other taste, they are in there. But carbon dioxide is also dissolved. So when I talk about the carbon dioxide dissolved in water, it is a solution of gas in liquid. But here again, the final phase of the solution is liquid. Glycerin in water. Glycerin is mixed with water. Glycerin is a liquid. Water is also a liquid. So this is a solution of liquid in liquid. So we have taken different examples here. Solid in liquid, gas in liquid, and then liquid in liquid, and also gas in gas. So these are different phases of matter which can mix up to form solution. But there is one other phase in which the final phase is solid, such as brass. Brass is a mixture of zinc and copper. But when we have any utensil made up of grass or, or any decorative item, we cannot find the zinc atoms or copper atoms. They are not visible to naked eyes. Such mixtures where the components are solid and the final phase of the matter is also solid, they are called alloys. So we will take up alloys in little detail. I will say that alloys are mixture of two or more metals or at least a metal with some non-metal. The alloys of metals, as I said, one example is brass, which is 30% zinc and 70% copper. I will take another example, gold. Pure gold, which is characterized as 24 karat gold, it is so soft that it cannot be used for making jewelry. So sometimes copper or silver are mixed into it to give it a slight hardness so that jewelry cannot be easily molded and it can become little stable. So then it is not a pure gold, although we are saying that this is a gold jewelry. And then the purity of gold is defined there in terms of carat, depending upon the ratio of uh, the gold and some other metal that is mixed into it. Then we can have non-metal also in alloys such as stainless steel. We call it as a stainless steel means it does not stain. Actually, it is mainly iron. And iron, you know, can get easily rusted. So it is a alloy in which carbon is mixed and some other metals like nickel or chromium are also mixed. And we get a particular ratio of this solid which doesn't get rusted easily and we call it as stainless steel. So here it is a non-metal also present. But the mixture of non-metals are never called alloys. At least one metal should be there, other may be metal or non-metal. Then one more example I would like to take here that there can be a liquid metal also whereas the final phase will become a solid and it is the dental alloy. You must have heard that silver is filled in cavities in the teeth and that dental alloy is a mixture of silver, some amount of nickel with mercury but final phase is solid. So these are different uh, solutions where the final phase is a solid. So when we talk about the solution and as I said that there can be more than one substance mixed into it, the, they are called components of a solution. There must be at least two components in the solution. There can be more than that. But when there are two components, they are called as solvent and solute. So how do you define? The component of the solution that dissolves the other component in it, generally it is the one which is present in larger ratio. And the component of the solution that is dissolved in the solvent, this is the one that is present generally in the lesser quantity. So means in solution we will have two components, at least two components. The one which is in larger ratio we will call it as solvent 
one which is present in the smaller ratio, we will call it as solute. Solutions have some characteristic properties also. First thing we have discussed, they are the homogeneous mixtures. Then second, uh, they consist of very small particles. Generally, the particle size is less than 1 nanometer and 1 nanometer you know is 10 raised to the power minus 9 meters. They do not scatter a beam of light passing through it. Means if we pass a beam of light through a solution, we cannot see its path because no light is being scattered. The particle size is so small. Then solute particles do not settle when left undisturbed. Means they are so small, they keep on moving in the solution and they do not settle under the influence of gravity. And last is solute particles cannot be separated by process of filtration. Although we have some chemical processes by which we can separate the constituent particles. Now whenever we make a solution, we dissolve some amount of solute in a solvent. Let us take the one example. Suppose one person is asking for a tea and he says put one spoon of sugar. Now here the amount of the spoon is not defined in terms of grams. It is only one spoon. And suppose another person takes two spoons of sugar of the same size. It means one has lesser amount of solute in it, other has larger amount of solute in it. And we call when the solute is in lesser amount a dilute solution and when solute is in larger amount we call it as a concentrated solution. But when we have a solution where the maximum amount of solute that can be dissolved at a particular temperature that solution is called a saturated solution. Now dilute solution or concentrated solution are just the relative terms. We do not have a uh, measure for it that which is dilute because suppose a person dissolves 3 spoons of sugar in a cup of tea then that is more concentrated than where were 2 spoons and 2 spoon tea is more concentrated than when, when was 1 spoon of sugar. So dilute and concentrated are just the relative terms. So scientifically when we want to discuss we must specify the quantities in terms of some mass or volume. A solution is said to be saturated when no more solute can be dissolved at a given particular temperature. That is the maximum of solute that has been dissolved at a particular temperature we will call it as a saturated solution at that particular temperature. And the amount of solute present in the saturated solution at a given temperature is called its solubility. And the solubility is expressed in terms of grams of the solute present in particular amount of solvent that may be in uh, mass that is in terms of grams or maybe in terms of volume. And we can express mathematically this concentration of solution in uh, different ways. I will discuss only here the simplest ways which are used that is using the ratio of mass or volume of the solute to the ratio of mass or volume of solution. One simplest way is mass by mass percentage. This is obtained by the ratio of mass of the solute to the mass of solution multiplied by 100 means how much solute in terms of gram is dissolved in how much of solution. It is not solvent, the total mass of the solution and it is further multiplied by 100, we call it as a mass percentage. Then it can be mass by volume percentage. Here it is mass of the solute divided by the volume of the solution multiplied by 100. And third is volume by volume percentage it is volume of the solute to the volume of solution multiplied by 100. So where we need these ratios? You must have seen uh, some creams, some medicines where it is mentioned that this particular content is present in this particular ratio. But it is always mentioned there it is m by m that is mass by mass 
or m by v if it's the final phase is liquid as m by v. <laughs> so these are the simplest ways of expressing the concentration of a solution. So uh, we'll stop here today yes, and I'll simply summarize what we have discussed today. We started that what is matter and we talked about the purity of matter and we said that most of the matter that we use are actually not pure in terms of its components. They are the mixture and a mixture is the one that is made up of one or more pure components. Yes, sir. These components may be uh, atoms or they may be molecules. Then these mixtures may be homogeneous or heterogeneous. We discussed about the homogeneous mixtures which are called solutions and in our next session we will talk about the heterogeneous mixtures. Yes, fine sir, it's time to wind up the session and thank you so much sir for explaining this chapter to our students. Thank, thank you. you. Namaskar sir. Namaskar. So dear students and learners, ये हमारा सत्र था साइंस का और आपसे एक महत्वपूर्ण बात साझा करना चाहते हैं कला उत्सव के बारे में आप सभी को पता है कि कला उत्सव शुरू हो चुका है तीन जनवरी 2023 से और ये सात जनवरी तक चलेगा और कला उत्सव एंड इनिशिएटिव ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ स्कूल एजुकेशन एंड लिटरेसी मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ एजुकेशन गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया ऑर्गेनाइज्ड बाय एन एट रीजनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एजुकेशन भुवनेश्वर उड़ीसा आइए देखते हैं उसकी एक छोटी सी झलक India is our land of diverse culture and glory. Let's showcase the art with the glimpses of its story. We hear the sound of music, we dance to and get best. Paint a picture, make some toys rejoice. Let's do solo acting, let's dance. Let's sing and paint. Some toys rejoice. Kala utsa, kala utsa, kala utsa, kala utsa. Children from every nook and corner will perform. Oh, great! We will have glimpses from each and every state. We hear the sound of music. We dance to and get dressed. Paint a picture, make some toys rejoice. We hear the sound of music, we dance to and get dressed. Paint a picture, make some toys rejoice. The loud song, the loud song, the loud song, the loud song. Kala Utsav. An initiative of the Department of School Education and Literacy, Ministry of Education, Government of India announces Kala Utsav, organized by NCERT from 3rd to 7th January 2023 at Regional Institute of Education, Bhuvaneshwar. Kala Utsav. Kala Utsav. तो स्टूडेंट्स एंड लर्नर्स अभी आप देख रहे थे कला उत्सव की झलकियां जिसमें विभिन्न विद्यार्थियों द्वारा उनके कला का प्रदर्शन कला उत्सव के जरिए किया गया तो अब हमें भी इजाजत दीजिए अभी कुछ ही पलों में हम फिर से हाजिर होंगे उर्दू के एक सत्र को लेकर नमस्कार